The human brain is complex, and people's brains are different based on a whole bunch of different things. But as America enters yet another election season, I gotta know, does our physiology shape our politics or vice versa? This ought to get that comment section jumping, jumping like it's 1999. Theme song time. There's a spell out theme song. Then I'm gonna put this brain down and do the words. Do our brains modulate our behavior? Does our environment modulate our behavior, which then modulates our brain activation? Well, this is classic nature nurture debate, but research suggests it could be both. Before we get politically picante, let's talk about research. People have built whole frameworks based on similarities and differences in behavioral expression and their correlates in the brain. Research usually falls within the lanes of whole brain size, specific brain structure size, and activation of different brain regions. Even genetics have been called into question to explain why we believe what we believe, and politics are the perfect example. All right, hold up. We can't go anywhere without some important definitions. The word liberalism, as I'll be using it, is the belief that government should be active in supporting social and political change, and conservatism, a political philosophy based on tradition and social stability, stressing established institutions and preferring gradual development to abrupt change. Now, I gotta check my producers. How's the comment section looking so far? It hasn't started yet. Well, it will. Throw a meter up there so we can see how hot it gets. Throw a bing on there. Bing. All right. Let's start with growing up. We all grow up, right? That's not controversial. Like, okay, comment section's looking cool, but we all have ideas programmed into us by the media we're exposed to, by our friends and family, and by our general environment. But research suggests that it may be in our genetics. How? Well, we, we got CNN town hall debates raging in our DNA, just like, I need a guanine, like, ah, right. No. A 2014 study surveying 12,000 twins, identical and fraternal, from all over the world proposes that up to 60% of our political beliefs come from our environment, leaving up to 40% come from our genetics. Peter Hatami, the lead researcher on the study, suggests that we inherit some of how we process information from our parents, and that manifests in society today as political attitudes. Further evidence from a 2015 study suggests that genes with receptors for the neurotransmitter dopamine are associated with how liberal or conservative we are. That study found that among women who were liberal, 62% were carriers for a certain receptor genotype that had been previously associated with traits like extroversion and seeking new impulsive adventures. Meanwhile, among highly conservative women, those receptor genotypes fell to around 37.5%. How are we doing? How's that meter looking? Oh, low. All right, let's heat this bad boy up. Throw a picture of Colin Firth. Yep, yeah, that one. Yep, same one. That dude. Yep, yeah, that dude. You can be devilishly handsome and do science at the same time. I mean, look at him, not me. He co-authored a paper in 2011, which, get yourself a man who can do both, but it suggests that there are anatomical differences in the brains of younger adults on a liberal conservative axis. His team discovered that liberalism was associated with higher gray matter volume of the anterior cingulate cortex, AKA the ACC, and conservatism was associated with increased right amygdala size. The activity of the anterior cingulate cortex has been related to decision-making, socially driven interactions, and empathy, and the amygdala plays a key role in processing emotions and forms part of the limbic system. Their research suggests that the liberal brains may be more conflict resolution driven, while conservative brains are more emotion driven. Further research finds that people with bigger amygdalas are also less likely to participate in protest movements. Of course, all this research is correlational and not causal. However, it does lead to interesting conversations about nature and nurture when it comes to biology and politics. Okay, I can hear it, I can see it. Don't blame me, blame Colin Firth. Still love you, Colin. Can't wait for Kingsman 3 and Bridget Jones' Tumblr account. So let's talk about the elephant or donkey in the room, age. As our beliefs and behaviors shift, so do our brains. And it's like that our brains change as our political views, a set of beliefs and behaviors change. British research from 1964 to 2010 suggests that generational differences do affect vote choice between liberal and conservative candidates, but it also proposes that people tend to vote more conservative as they get older. So we either die a liberal or live long enough to become a conservative? More research is needed, but all this research taken together suggests that there are biological and environmental factors that can influence, may influence, or be influenced by our politics. Okay, so I can see that meter is just straight up broken, but I just reported facts, y'all. Lots of differences in genetics and neurological structures are reported for a bunch of different things, gender, race, athleticism, etc., etc. The brain isn't necessarily partisan, but when we move to political extremes, it will affect our physiology and psychology, changing implicit attitudes we have, memories, and even our perceptual judgments. As we enter a super polarized political arena, while our ideals and morals should definitely be upheld, it's important to bridge the partisan divide by investing in facts and a shared reality rather than creating our own. Now, that's a lot of information about your brain to put in your brain, so right now you probably need a little break, just, you know, grab some tea, 
crash from the TV and watch nothing in particular. But did you know that even apolitical entertainment television can influence your political opinion? Check out that bad boy right here. And please be sure to subscribe to Seeker, and thank you so, so much for watching.